So one video I've been meaning to do for a while now is about classic orthoscopic eyepieces, or in short, orthos, and show off the differences between their design and that of the more modern eyepieces. Well, today is the day, as in this video we are going to check out the Q turret eyepiece set from Bader Planetarium. I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to another video review. The term orthoscopic originates from the Greek word ortho, meaning straight or correct, and skopein, meaning to see. Dating back to the mid 19th century, orthos were developed as optical engineers sought to improve the quality of images produced by telescopes. One of the earliest pioneers in the development of orthoscopic eyepieces was Ernst Abbe a German physicist and optical designer known for his work at the renowned Carl Zeiss Optics Company. Abe contributed significantly to the understanding of optical aberrations and their correction, laying the groundwork for the design principles behind the otoscopic eyepiece. As a result, orthos are known for their relatively simple design compared to other eyepiece types, such as wide-angle or zoom eyepieces. They typically have a narrower field of view and a short eye relief, but offer superior image quality and sharpness across the entire field of view, making them particularly well suited for observing fine details during lunar and planetary observations, as well as other celestial objects like double stars, for example. With the arrival of newer eyepiece designs, orthos became less and less popular to a point that only a handful of manufacturers still produce them today. One of these manufacturers is Bader Planetarium. Located in Mamendorf, Bavaria, the company was founded in 1966 by Klaus Bader and first started out by producing observatories for schools and universities. Later they began diversifying their portfolio by designing and producing eyepieces and telescope accessories as well. One of their less known eyepiece lineups is the classic Ortho series. They offer these eyepieces either as individual items or as part of a set like this one, which also includes a barrel and an eyepiece turret for easy eyepiece switching. Now, full disclosure, Bader did send me this eyepiece set for the purpose of this review, and why I really appreciate this, it won't color my opinion about it. They sent me this set in this rather nice looking metal box. Inside we find the classic ortho set, which consists of three ortho eyepieces and a classic plöse. All four eyepieces cover a focal length range from 6 to 32 mm. Included is also a matching two-piece barrel with a power of 1.3 or 2.25 to go with the aforementioned eyepieces. An eyepiece turret that allows for an easy way to switch between the different eyepieces is also part of this set. All eyepieces come with a one and a quarter inch barrel size and feature an optical design consisting of four lenses in two groups. While the optical design of the orthos sees a triple field lens and a single eye lens element, the plözel, also known as a symmetric eyepiece, features two achromat elements with crowns facing each other. Over the last couple of weeks, I've tested this set in combination with a 4-inch ED refractor and a 5-inch SCT during nights with good seeing conditions on targets like the Moon and Jupiter. So how did the eyepieces perform? Well, let's break it down and look at each eyepiece individually, starting with the 32mm plözel. While its 50 degrees apparent field of view is pretty restricted for an overview eyepiece, the quality of the views it is able to produce is rather good. Stars are depicted as perfect pinpoints of light almost across the entire field of view. Only towards the edge does the view start to soften up a bit. But otherwise the views are bright and have good contrast. 
These characteristics makes this eyepiece great at roaming around the night sky, but also at observing finer details in DSOs like the Orion, Nebula or the Pleiades. Thanks to a generous eye relief of 21mm and a large top lens, the overall viewing experience is excellent. The eyepiece is also very forgiving when it comes to eye positioning, meaning you don't have to hover perfectly still above the lens to avoid black spots and this makes observing with this eyepiece that much more comfortable and enjoyable. Moving over to the first eyepiece from this set with an orthoscopic lens design, the 18mm Classic Ortho. The orthoscopic design here allows for a marginally wider apparent field of view of 52 degrees compared to the Plözel, which while still restricted is flat and sharp right up to the edge. Even more impressive are the brightness and contrast levels. Paired with the C5, there weren't any noticeable optical aberrations visible. The view of the moon really looked like a high-res image viewed on a computer screen. Even if the 14.6mm eye relief is not that long, the viewing experience with this eyepiece is still decently good. The top lens is wide enough and doesn't require you to hover perfectly above it just to avoid black spots. But my favorite eyepiece of the bunch is definitely the 10mm Ortho. In my opinion, this eyepiece combined with the C5 is one of the best showcases for the Ortho's optical performance. At 125 times magnification, the details visible on Jupiter were just wonderful, the cloud bands and the great red spot being easy to distinguish features of the planet's atmosphere. Switching to the 4-inch refractor and the moon as a target, I was greeted with lots of details and an overall very crisp and contrast-rich view, while the short eye relief of only 8mm puts a damper on the viewing experience, it is still acceptable since the field of view of 52 degrees isn't that wide and can still be covered with a single glance without the need to get uncomfortably close to the lens. An improvement for the overall viewing experience comes from the fact that this eyepiece, like the ones before, is very forgiving when it comes to eye positioning. So as long as I kept my eye close enough to the lens, I had no trouble following my target without experiencing blackouts or unwanted internal reflections. The last ortho eyepiece in this set is the 6mm version. And this paints a different picture, at least for me. While the quality of the views it is able to produce is still excellent, just like the other eyepieces in this set, the eye relief of only 5mm is too short for my liking. Getting that close to the lens with my naked eye just isn't a very pleasant experience and I always ended up keeping more distance than required and thus seeing only parts of the field of view at a time. Other than this, the 6mm Ortho shares the same positive characteristics with the other eyepieces in this set. The views are bright, sharp and contain lots of details. The magnification increase by switching from the 10mm to this one didn't diminish the quality of the image a bit. The last eyepiece in this set is the 2.25x Bello, which was specifically designed to work together with the Ortho eyepieces. However, this doesn't mean that it won't work with other eyepieces as well. On the contrary, it worked wonderfully when paired with the 9mm Delight or with the 24mm Pan Optic. The cube Bello can be separated into two pieces and depending on the configuration, it can be used to provide either a 1.3 or 2.25 times magnification power. The bottom part of the bellow can either be screwed into the eyepiece turret, which I'll talk about in a minute, or combined with a single eyepiece. Just like the eyepieces of this set, the bellow features high quality glass and coatings. This is why the views with and without the bellow are remarkably similar in terms of contrast, brightness and sharpness. This means that the bellow does its job very well and in spite the extra glass added to the optical system, the quality of the image doesn't suffer, which is high praise for any bellow. 
in terms of build quality, I can report that all the eyepieces in this set, including the bare lowlands, are very well made. Compared to others, these are small, lightweight eyepieces made completely out of glass and anodized aluminum. The housings of these eyepieces have been blackened on the inside as well to reduce unwanted internal reflections. While on the upper side, they all feature a fixed but foldable rubber winged eye guard for extra shielding against external sources of light. The bottom part features threading for attaching filters and other accessories such as a bellow lens. The optical system of all these eyepieces contains, as mentioned in the beginning of this video, four lenses into groups which produce four air to glass surfaces. These surfaces have all been treated with a special high transmission coating to eliminate internal reflections and increase contrast levels. All lenses have also blackened edges to aid this purpose even further. One last aspect worth mentioning is that all these eyepieces are par focal, meaning that you don't need to adjust the focus when changing the eyepieces. And this makes a lot of sense when you look at the set these are part of. By using the eyepiece turret, you can simply select the eyepiece you want by rotating the turret and continue to observe without the need to readjust anything. The target remains sharp and in the center of the field of view. Speaking of the eyepiece turret, it can house up to four one and a quarter inch eyepieces, allowing you to switch between these by simply rotating it. It basically consists of two arched or spherical discs connected at the center that can be freely rotated independently of one another. The top disc houses four one and a quarter inch sockets and the bottom one features a threaded one and a quarter inch nose piece that can be inserted into any focuser or diagonal. Even though both discs are made out of hard plastic and don't feel very premium, the turret is solid and the movement is smooth thanks to a clever click-stop mechanism. It's also precise, meaning I had no trouble aligning the eyepiece with the nose piece and therefore the diagonal. The one and a quarter inch nose piece and all four sockets are all made out of aluminum. The only real complaint regarding the Q-turret is that Bader went with a single tightening screw per socket instead of a more eyepiece friendly compression ring system. The thing is that in order to be able to rotate the turret, everything needs to be tightened down really well. And this means that the tightening screws will leave scratches and indentations on the nose piece of the eyepieces. A nice thing, however, is that this eyepiece turret should also work with any eyepieces, as long as they are not too wide or their nose piece is too long. But here there is something you need to keep in mind. Having multiple eyepieces of different sizes inserted into the turret at the same time might lead to some odd ergonomic issues when observing, where the eyepieces that are not being used might get in the way. Here you'll need to experiment a bit with the layout beforehand. Another potential issue is also that the tightening screws on the diagonal socket might be a bit difficult to reach when the turret is fully inserted into the socket, since the arched shape can cover this up. But aside from these ergonomic aspects, the turret is a nice piece of kit, one that I think I'll be using more often in the future with other eyepieces as well. In order to get a more complete picture regarding the optical performance of the eyepieces in this set, I not only compared them between each other, but I've thrown the 9mm delight from Teleview into the mix as well. And this helped put the strengths as well as the limitations of the orthoscopic design into perspective. So what do I mean by this? Well, all the included orthos, especially the 10 mm one, managed to match the image quality of the delight in terms of brightness, contrast and sharpness. And this alone is a testament of how wonderful these small little eyepieces are. Okay, but seeing that each of these authors costs five times less than the Delight, 
it should be a no-brainer to choose them over the more expensive premium alternatives, right? Well, it is not so simple. Here we arrive at the limitations of the ortho design, namely the other aspects besides image quality that round off an eyepiece and make it exceptional, such as a long eye relief, a wide field of view and a nice and comfortable viewing experience in general. Here the Delight manages to continue to offer top marks in every category, while the Bader Orthos and orthoscopic eyepieces in general only manage to offer a rather limited viewing experience. The Delight is definitely the no compromise option here, but also the much more expensive one. Orthos are designed to provide the highest possible image quality above anything else, easily being capable of delivering top brightness, contrast and sharpness levels, all while keeping costs at a minimum. And this alone is a killer combination. No wonder that these eyepieces are so popular, especially among seasoned astronomers who know exactly what they want from an eyepiece. But design limitations regarding the other aspects that make an eyepiece fun, easy and comfortable to use also make orthos less interesting in the eyes of beginners or less experienced astronomers. What Bader is trying to do here with the Q turret ortho set is to offer a compelling reason for us to try out the orthoscopic eyepiece design no matter how experienced we are. And in my opinion, I believe they succeeded in making orthos more interesting this way. Short of a telescope and maybe a diagonal, the Q turret ortho set includes everything you need to make your first pleasant acquaintance with the orthoscopic eyepiece design. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about this eyepiece set and about orthoscopic eyepieces in general. I'm very much looking forward to reading your opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.